Hey everyone, it's Eric here from Lapworks. Got another video for you guys today. Today I got this interesting one. Well, it's not interesting. I'm sure a lot of people probably had it, at least back in the day, and they probably have some newer updated ones. But this is an Apple a time capsule. And it's usually like a network drive, so it's like a NAS drive that you usually configure through like an uh, airport utility, which a lot of them still have. Even the newer OSs still have that airport utility still there. It's for that. You can access it through a network. You connect it to your network. And it's all nice, right? But sometimes they have trouble, and sometimes you can't access them. So you can try to, there's different ways you can do that. Um, the major thing is you can try resetting the network settings. There, there's usually like a username uh, for an admin, and then there's a password. You can access it that way. Go through the airport utility tool. Helps you go through that. You, you can connect this directly, uh, usually through like Ethernet connection. That's why they have all those nice connections on the back. But no matter what, you still can't avoid the problem is that they're, the fact of the matter is that there is a problem with the hard drive itself, right? Because inside these isn't any type of special magic juice that's in there from Apple. It could be Apple juice. I don't know. But it is actual hard drive. and It's mechanical hard drive, especially these older ones. And you can tell it's older when the white is a lot, very washed out. And it gets more of a yellow, yellowish color. So what we need to do is um, we're going to go ahead, open it up, and look at to see what's inside. I would believe on the size here that this is probably most likely a three and a half inch mechanical drive that will probably fit in here. Probably barely fit. And it's probably like um, has input output, right, that has power supply and stuff like that. So let's go ahead, open this up, and take a look and see what's going on. So they make these. They put the little rubber silicone on the bottom. It's glued. So I have to remove that. And now under that, we actually do have... The screws. Oh, it's popped. Okay. This just pops up. Okay, so we just need to remove the connections here. There's a SATA connection that's there. And, oops. So we just need to remove the connections there. There's a SATA connection itself. And this is all pretty much the, the I.O. for the NAS there. And uh, we're lucky that there's no type of like RAID configuration or anything else, just one drive that's in there, which usually makes a little bit more sense because it's just using the hard drive as a network drive. We also have like a temperature sensor there to make sure everything is fine. But we take it out, it's a three and a half inch drive, right? It's a Samsung three and a half inch drive and it has a little Apple logo there, right? But we don't see any obvious damage to the PCB here. Let's just actually see if we just get rid of this part and then we go ahead and plug it in and see what we get. So I have my Mac over here because this is a Mac drive. Um, usually they're more like, right, uh, Mac OS journaled. Um, could be like under like a HFS plus or something. So let's go ahead and plug that in. Let's see. Here we go. All right, so I plug it in. You can hear the drive spinning. That's a good sign. Let's go ahead and bring it up on my screen capture here. Okay, so we have it up, and we do see that there are a few partitions actually to come up here. So let's go to disk management, or, or I'm sorry, sorry for those Apple people out there, disk utility. Sorry about that, because we use it all the time. Okay, so we see that there is a Samsung drive here, and it is a one terabyte Samsung drive. And we have a few partitions. This is just the AP config, so it's the airport configuration and the airport swap. And then we also do have a data partition. That looks to be about half full, right? So it shows that there's about almost 500 gigs uh, used in here. So that's good, right? So let's go ahead and double click this. It should pop up. Now there's a folder called share root. And if we open it up, um, this is just the customer's name. I don't want to show that. Let's hit um, package info. And we still can't read any type of data, right? But if we back out here, we want to go ahead and hit get info for it. And we. We do see that GitInfo says there's, a, there's about 402 gigabytes of data, so that's good. So all we need to do now is just read this uh, disk image, because this is a sparse disk image bundle, and we need to be able to read that. So how can we read that? If we right-click and hit Show Package Contents, this is what we get here. Okay, 
and it took a while and it loads and not, it's pretty much just nothing that you can really use, right? Um, so we know the size is there and everything looks good, but why don't we just act like a non-tech, right? And let's just double click this here. So we're gonna double click it. And what it should do is, um, because of what type of uh, file this is, this is a sparse bundle file. And the sparse bundle file is pretty much, right, um, it's gonna mount itself as more like a time machine. So if I go back over here, um, we're gonna see that we saw this pop up now in, in our disk utility. And it shows that there is a time machine, and this is a time machine backup, right? So it's gonna take a while for this to load. Uh, we'll see if it actually does load up. Um, if it doesn't load up, then we need to access this via a different way because this isn't gonna be good enough. So um, we could try our other type of um, day recovery um, hardware and software and see if it will load, but it's taking some time. And uh, I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit. I'll see if I can come back if it's still not mounted or not, but it's having trouble mounting, it looks like. We're trying to let this mount. I think it's just taking its time to mount. Um, we're trying to force it to mount. Right, it still can't force them out. So it's taking a long time. I'm gonna wait a little bit longer and see if it's actually gonna go ahead and mount. So we'll be right back. Okay, so we got an error for it. It says could not mount time machine backups and it's giving this error code there. Um, so it looks like there is a problem with the drive. The drive is acting pretty slow anyway as it goes. So what we wanna do is we want to eliminate this anyway because even if we're able to access the data, we don't wanna be transferring files one by one. We wanna make sure we at least can see a problem with the drive or if we need to image it we might want to do that first and then worry about getting the data after so let's go ahead make sure that um, we can check it with our other uh, tools here our more advanced tools um, usually for, for more like head replacement stuff like that we'll try that first and then see if that works and see if we can access the data image it and hopefully get all the data off of it okay so we can work with the tools here you can see the samsung drive you can see the capacity of the drive too we we'll make sure everything else is good and if it does look good, we'll put a little bit of work. And from there, we can actually build the head map, make sure there's no other issues there. And from there, we'll put some little bit more work into it. And then we will also image the drive. So make sure we're not using the main uh, drive itself because imaging it is always the best way to go, especially if you're doing a recovery for it. So you don't have to worry about the drive getting any type of issue by looking at it. And we can see the root here. And it looks like we can see everything and it actually is mounting. So we're able to get the data. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video on recovering data from a time uh, from an Apple time capsule. If you did, please leave a like. It really does help us a lot. Subscribe for more content. See you guys next video. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Take care. Bye.